In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 reasons why you need to see a therapist. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic, why you need to see a therapist. There are major reasons why it's beneficial to talk to a trained listener. When I say trained listener, I mean a person who is not a loved one or close friend, someone like a rabbi, a priest, a therapist, a counselor, a licensed social worker, a psychologist. And in this video, I'm going to cover 10 reasons why that's an awesome thing for you to do. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll throw in a pro tip of how to improve your relationship with your counselor, no matter who they are. A quick sidebar before we get rolling, the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor who is an expert at the pharmacology of improving depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, etc. They have training in counseling, but in the modern era, psychiatrists don't do talk therapy. A psychologist, on the other hand, is typically a PhD who has expert training in listening and provides care by talking to a human being. There's different flavors of psychologists, but I oftentimes hear people confusing psychiatry and psychology, and so I hope it clears up that point. Reason number one. In our Western society, you're allowed to work. In fact, you're allowed to work as much as you want. You're allowed to care for your family. You're allowed to take care of your medical health. But you're not really afforded the space or time to worry about yourself, to take personal time. Imagine if you took a day off from work just to hang out by yourself in the park. Your boss and your coworkers and your family might scratch their head and wonder why you did that. In our society, we're not allowed to process and think about ourselves very much at all, which is a travesty. My first reason for seeing a counselor is counseling is the space where societally we're allowed to process and think about ourselves, to unabashedly talk about issues that are relating to us in our lives, and to have someone help us with that without judgments from the outside world. Counseling creates a very, very special thing that we truly can't find anywhere else in Western culture. That's number one. Reason number two, family and friends don't cut it. Now don't get me wrong. Having family and having friends is super important to our well-being and our health and our happiness. And those are, by definition, intimate relationships. Here's the problem. If you tell your loved one that you're sad, they feel an emotion. They're not objective. And because they're not objective, they can't objectively contemplate what's going on and help you process and have those aha moments. When you sit with a counselor or a therapist who is not directly invested in your life, who is a trained listener, and you say, I'm sad, they say, mm-hmm, tell me more about that. And they can help you process. They can help you come to these amazing realizations and move yourself forward in a way that you can't with intimate loved ones like friends and family. That's reason number two. Reason number three why you should see a therapist. Therapy has been shown to be as effective in treating anxiety and depression as some medicines. It is a powerful tool in overcoming a very, very common constellation of symptoms in MS. That's reason number three. Now, piggybacking off reason number three, reason number four is that combining counseling and taking a medicine for depression is synergistic. The total is worth more than the sum of the parts. In other words, one plus one is three. Or in English, you're gonna do better, fare better, and overcome depression better and faster when you combine therapy with a medicine. That's good stuff. Reason number five to see a therapist is to learn how to grieve. What do I mean by that? Multiple sclerosis can cause loss of function. The function of an eye, the function of a hand, or your ability to do a task. Something like climbing up the steps or working as an accountant. 
And when that occurs, we have to go through a grieving process. We have to go through a grieving process. And if you try to push through without grieving, it doesn't work. And you're going to revisit these emotions. And until you come to terms with that loss, you're stymied. Now, grieving doesn't always come natural. And it can be very, very challenging. And a counselor, a therapist, a trained listener can help you through that process. They can teach you skills to grieve. It's important and it can make a big difference in the quality of your life. That's reason number five. Now to piggyback off reason number five, reason number six to see a counselor is to learn your new normal, change management. If you have a loss of function and you can't do something the way that you used to, it's appropriate to grieve that loss. Then when you're done grieving, it's appropriate to move on and figure out how you can continue to be awesome and accomplish those needs, but differently. Change management is super hard and a counselor can help you identify the need to do that and help you come up with a process to continue to be successful despite this limitation. One time someone gave me the following example. Imagine that you're on a motorboat with your family and you take the boat out into the middle of the lake so far that you can't even see land all around you and the motor dies. What are you going to do? You can't get back into shore using the motor, so you have to come up with another way of accomplishing the same task. Maybe you take everyone's shirt off and you stitch together a sail and you sail back in. Maybe you find some paddles and you paddle back in. Maybe you use your cell phone and call the Coast Guard. The point is you have to get your family back, but you can't do it the way that you used to. This is what I mean by change management. In living and thriving and surviving MS involves the ability to do that. And a counselor is amazingly adept at helping you through that process. Reason number seven is a big one. Dealing with stress is a major concern when considering being successful having multiple sclerosis. Nobody goes home at night and says, honey, let's get stressed out. That's just not a conversation you have. And I hate it when providers say, remove the stress in your life. Well, I would love to know how to do that. I certainly don't. Stressors can worsen MS symptoms. And so learning to manage stressors is really, really important. A trained listener, a therapist, a counselor is an expert at helping you manage stress. They will quite literally give you tips and tricks to how to overcome stressful situations. It can genuinely be life-saving, helping you manage your stress, lower your stress levels, and thrive. Number eight is also a really big one, learning how to communicate better. Part of going through the process of counseling is learning how to better express yourself and how to be a better listener to those around you. And this has a direct impact into relationships with loved ones, with spouses, with parents and children, with coworkers, with bosses. It can really improve your ability to explain yourself, to share your emotions and to hear what others are really trying to say to you. These are tools that a trained listener can help you learn. To piggyback off reason number eight, reason number nine to see a therapist has to do with relationships. There's a terrible statistic that people with MS are twice as likely to end up in divorce compared to the general population. That's one that really bothers me. And all relationships benefit from couples counseling. I literally have never met a couple that couldn't benefit from spending time with a counselor. I want to teach you a specific pro tip that can really help out in relationships. Something that I've learned in counseling myself that I apply in my relationships and that I want you to consider applying also. If you're dealing with a loved one or a close friend or a spouse and they really piss you off, they do something that's really upsetting to you on Monday, but you know that you're going to see your counselor on Thursday, whether that be individual private counseling or whether that be couples counseling, you can literally table your concern. You can put it away on a shelf and wait a couple days so you can then process it with your therapist and come up with awesome strategies to bring that back to the relationship. In counterpoint, if your loved one really pisses you off on Monday and you have no outlet, it can fester and grow and blow up, or you might jump in and address it right away without adequately processing. This is simply an example of the power of improving relationships through counseling. Consider it. It's a really important one. Reason number 10 to see a counselor 
is to uncover and learn maladaptive patterns of behavior which are limiting your ability to be successful or happy. And I'll use a quick example. Someone who has experienced generational poverty may find that they need to shop or spend money or purchase expensive things in order to make themselves feel safe. And they may not even realize that they're doing it. A counselor can help you uncover and understand this, become aware of those patterns of behavior, which gives you an opportunity to change them. I just shared with you 10 reasons why you should see a counselor. I'm speaking as a MS neurologist that has watched patients and families benefit for counseling for years now. I also speak as an individual that has personally benefited from working with counselors both one-on-one -on -one and in couples counseling. Now, I told you if you made it to the end of the video, I'd give you a pro tip, a bonus tip, and here it is. If you don't like your counselor, find a different one. Let me explain why. If you come to see me as your neurologist and you don't like my personality, we don't jive, and yet I give you really good medical advice, following that advice will lead to success, even though you don't really enjoy interacting with me, Aaron. But if you don't click with your counselor, they could quite literally give you the keys to happiness and you won't be able to adequately receive them. You have to like the person that you're talking to and working with. Counselors know this. And so if you've gone through a session or a few sessions and it's not working, let the counselor know. They will help you find a different counselor. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you want to up your MS game, consider watching this video right there. YouTube thinks that you would absolutely love this video right here. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that circle over my head. Until my next video or my next live stream, take care.